Are you ready to worship the Lord? Amen. Let's all stand.
wants to hear that. He hasn't given up on you. Ridiculous. Oh, there's nothing like it. You know, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Do you realize? Do you realize? Let me let me encourage somebody here this morning. That in the book of Esther, God's name is not mentioned once. Chaplain Lee, is that correct? Is my theological theology theological? Okay. read it in the book of Esther God's name is not mentioned once right. Pastor Thomas show is that right or no I just want to make sure all right Charlie is that right Charlie all right praise the Lord You're right. not one time is his name mentioned and you would think you may be seated in the presence of the Lord for a few minutes here you would think That God doesn't care that the Lord has lost interest in the life of Esther. Or the people of God and what they're going through and what's about to take place. And you're, at, you're wondering, wait a minute, God, don't, don't, don't you see what's transpiring? Don't you see how the enemy is working? And you would think that God would show up and flex his muscle on behalf of God of his people in an explosive mighty way you would think you'd see his name once in sight at least in one verse so at first glance how hopeless and you would think that he's uninterested and doesn't care and has given up do you realize that in the book of Esther that on in every verse every chapter every turn that God was working behind the scenes he was doing more on behalf of God's people and for Esther, when it seemed like he wasn't around, he was doing. <laughs> but what am I trying to? And, and if you read the rest of the story, now I don't got time. We know how the rest of the story that, that 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 there was a great victory, and Esther was given great favor, and and when it was all said and done, what the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for His glory. 
look at something just read it later uh, it's a good read isn't that the way they say that like in the books like when you're signing dooms books it's a good read it's a good read look at something it's a good read so right now here's your word this morning for someone in this room god hasn't given up on you and you think that 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 at where you're at right now where God hasn't heard your cry, God hasn't heard your prayer, God doesn't see where you're at and what's going on and the circumstances and the attacks of the enemy and you feel like God is the furthest he's ever been in your life and I'm here to tell you God has sent me here today to tell you that he's working more behind the scenes now on your behalf to bring things together all things work together for the good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose that God is working God is working God is working on your behalf his hand is in every corner every turn he knows where you're at he sees your heart and I'm here to tell you that God says 2018 is gonna be your year for miraculous comeback shall ya shall ya shall ya It's like, it's like a chef in the kitchen. God, I'm preaching now. And you're out waiting for the food to come out. And you don't see it yet. And you're wondering, okay, we, we put in the order. Haven't seen the waitress or the waiter come out for a while. Don't they know we're here? oh did they forget about us but what you don't see behind closed doors the chef is putting things in order and the right temperature <laughs> you, you were the one that ordered medium well so that's a little too red so got to give it a little more time amen and just get it just right so what So when the food comes out, so you don't see what's happening behind the kitchen. You don't see everybody running around and the chef tastes and making sure that's just right. And no, throw that away. Do it again. Amen. It's got to be just right. Yeah. Oh, look at someone saying it's a setup. Yeah. Just relax. Enjoy the music. The food's coming. <laughs> yeah. And it will satisfy. I said it will satisfy it will satisfy wait amen be patient amen God's timing is perfect he's doing some of his best work where you think he's not around he's doing some of his best work on your behalf behind the scenes amen just like Esther not one time do you see God's name but God was at work in every corner every chapter every verse working together bringing it together to bring victory on behalf of his people and I decree and declare that this year God's working keep doing the right thing keep trusting God for this is your year for a miraculous shall ya shall ya shall ya Charlie, come up here. Just good. We want to just we want to acknowledge somebody here today. Where's, where's, okay. Charles, come up here. We got something for you. We want to let you know how much we love you. We appreciate you. This church is better because of you. Chuck, why don't you want a couple words about you? Because know, I know you've been very. You've I just, just wanted to ask him why he does it. Okay, go ahead. So this brother here has got a heart to serve the Lord. He does more than a lot of us do. Uh, when they were tearing up the floor in the kitchen, 
he was leading the crew. He was keeping up with the big dogs, okay? He was breaking, he was breaking up that floor. And they were like, look, and I'm like, Charlie, what are you doing? He was, he was amazing. So sometimes Charlie's not real popular. He likes to talk about Jesus. He likes to preach what the Word of God says. Well, not everybody wants to hear that. Some people literally get up and walk away. Excuse me, I got to, you know, and they don't come back because they don't want to hear this guy preach. They don't know he knows the Bible. He knows he can read Hebrew. Okay. He has learned Russian. He doesn't, he kind of lost it, but he went to Russia, did a missionary trip. He was speaking Russian. So he's got some brains. He knows what he's talking about. When he talks about the Bible, he knows what he's talking about. I want to ask Charlie a question. Charlie, what, why do you do what you do here at Fire and Water? Well, the Lord told me if I'm going to truly do it, I have to serve him with no hope or reward because he said, if I don't love him greater than any of my physical relationship, I'm not worthy to be his disciple. He also says, if I don't deny myself and take up my cross, I'm not worthy of him. And he tells me, he also tells me, if I'm not doing the great commandment in Deuteronomy 6, 5 to 9, which says, I'm to love God above everything with all my heart, all my soul, and all my strength. And I'm to have his word daily before my eyes. If I have a family, I'm to teach these things to my children diligently. I to teach them when they, when they lay down, when they get up, when they go out, and when they come in. And I'm to write these things on a doorpost of my house and on my gates. I'm to, love, I'm to love my neighbor, but I also love my enemy. And the Beatitudes, and the Beatitudes, Jesus says, Blessed are you when men vow and persecute you and say, All men of evil for you. Blessed are you for grace your reward in heaven. So if I serve without any hope or reward, God blesses me more than I can shake a stick at. So, so, so this is why we serve. Not to be comfortable, not to do anything else. We serve to show our love for Him. And if we're truly living for Him, it's not charity, it's not Pastor Gus, it's Jesus. And if we're living for Jesus, we don't need any reward. We got the greatest reward in heaven. Amen. 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 You hear what he said? Who loves Jesus in this house? So, amen. The love, you will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their love for one another. But I want to know how many people here, don't raise your hands. How many people here can keep up with this man? I don't think there's anybody here that can do it. But it's not because of a lack of strength. Because he's not strong. He's got weakness in his body. He works when he's in pain. There's a sacrifice of love here. Charlie's not a bragger. He's not up here to brag. I told him he had to be ready to share a little bit of what he does and why. Amen. 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 Well, check this out. This is a certificate of appreciation presented to Charles Hodges on May March 25, 2018 for your tireless support support and dedication to fire and water international church you are an inspiration to many uh, senior pastor pastor desk of itself fire and water international church so this is for you amen and this is a little something and a little card that's in here also so you can go get some coffee because we all know that he likes lots of coffee so he's following so he's following in good footsteps amen Charles, god bless you thank you thank you for your faithfulness amen praise god God bless you. Right here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Come on. Let him know how much we love him and appreciate him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord just for a few minutes and we're going to go back to worship. Let me just, let me just, um, so number one this morning, 
uh, 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 where, where you think God isn't around, he hasn't heard you, he's not listening, he doesn't care anymore, your word is, he hasn't, he has, he hears your cry, he knows where you're at, keep trusting him. And just like Esther, where it seemed like he wasn't around, in due season, you shall reap a harvest. For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their... Amen? And remember, the closer you get to your victory and your miracle and what God's about to do right before the stake's about to come out just right. Uh, that sounds good, doesn't it? Right before it's about to come out. You know, that's when you're the hungriest. That's the one you get kind of antsy a little bit. It's like, where's my food? Where's my food? What's going? Come on now, amen? But then you take that first bite and you're like, ah, that was worth the wait. Look at somebody, just wait. God's timing is perfect. He has, you are not overlooked. You have not been pushed to the side. You, 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 you're on top of his list. Now look at some of you. He's on top of your list. I'm top of his list. His list. He's on top of, I'm on top of his list. You're on top of his list. How's that possible? Because he's God all by himself. Amen. I said because he's God all by himself. Praise the Lord. Watch this. And number two here, God is speaking is, as we honor Charles here, and just let him know how much we appreciate him. Um, the Bible says a gr the greatest among them is a servant. And, 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 and one of the keys also to, to victory and, 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 and protecting your victory and maintaining your victory and finishing strong, amen? How many people want to finish strong? How, how, how many people want to protect what God has already done and want to protect what God's about to do also, amen? Because you do understand when, 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 when God's working and, and God's about to show up on your behalf and there's the breakthrough, there's your miraculous comeback, as soon as that happens, immediately, see, first of all, your comeback, your miraculous comeback always is under attack right before your comeback. But then once you get your comeback and your miracle and your turnaround and your breakthrough and the restoration and the healing and family salvation, whatever it might be, then your comeback, your miracle will come under attack. It's under attack before. It's under attack afterwards. Because the devil knows right after you receive your victory and your breakthrough, we have a tendency as a people to let our guards down. Let's relax a little bit. Finally, oh, the steak was really good. It's at that time you need to put your guard up and protect your victory. Protect your miracle as you go forward. And one of the ways that we protect our miracle and our breakthrough, or even, let me say like this, even help get our breakthrough in the midst of the process of whatever it might be that we're going through, whatever the situation might be, whatever your condition might be. Come on. Whatever your condition might be in this season, to get to the promise or the position that God's called you to, now we're not after position and we're not after titles, but God has called us all to do something. And by the way, if you're after the title or, or the position itself, you've missed it. Look at something and say, you've missed it. We need to continue to be after once you get the position and you start to function what you've been called in, praise the Lord. We need to continue to be after the one that put us in position, not after the position. Uh, are you listening? Did you hear what I said? Because as we continue to go after the one that put us in the position, he gives us a promise to continue to give us what we need when we need it. And all these things, Matthew 6, 33, 
and all these things shall be added unto you. As a byproduct of the first half of verse 33, seek first the kingdom of heaven and his in other words, seek first his way of doing things. And don't forget, when you get in that place of victory and, and, and that platform that God's called you to, why he has opened up the door, preserved you, protected you. I, I said protected you. Many of us shouldn't even be here. Well, pastor, it's because, no, it wasn't because of anything you did. Amen. It's, it was his grace, amen? So slow down with your bad self, amen? You didn't do nothing. You didn't pray like you should have prayed. You didn't fast like you. You did the complete opposite to make everything. You did everything possible to not be here, amen? But God's so good that, 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 that he's so good. He's so patient and so faithful. By his grace, here you are, amen? Don't forget when he brings you to that position, why he has preserved you and helped you and why you have received your miraculous comeback. It's not for you to tuck away. It's to help somebody else's miraculous comeback. Amen. It's for somebody else's miraculous comeback. The greatest among them is a servant. How do you continue to protect the miracle? How do you, how do you, how do you, how do you, if I'm in the midst of something or I'm in a, a certain condition that I'm struggling in, whatever that might be, do I need more prayer? Well, prayer is good. Yeah. Church, absolutely. Faith comes by hearing, by hearing the word of God. Faith rises up. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, but he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. Yeah, yeah, that's all important. So all that stuff is good. But, 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 but watch this. And here's where the enemy has tricked today's church. Once you get started and you have a condition, you need to sit down and just do nothing. You're not ready yet. You're, we got to get you to a certain place. No, I'm ready to tell you the devil's a liar. You need to get busy. You need to start doing something. If, the, if this is your first day here, praise the Lord. There's something to do. Amen. You, you, as soon as this service is over, there's opportunities and places for you to get involved and start serving. Amen. Because that is one of the biggest keys to your victory to get you out of your condition into God's position. Amen. Amen. So watch this. So what you heard here, and this is where the joy comes. This is where life comes. This is where encouraging comes. So while you're still going through what you're going through, praise the Lord. Because when you start to see lives impacted and people being touched and, and, and the kingdom of God going forward for the glory of God, it brings hope. It brings encouragement. It brings healing. It brings restoration. Watch this. So Proverbs, and here, and, we're gonna, and, I'm, done, and I'm done. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 25. And get that in the NIV. Is that the NIV? Yes. Which one is that? What do I? I'm reading the NIV here, and it's different. A generous. I want to read it out of this one. Can we get the other one? A generous man. Oh, eleven twenty-five. I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking at it. It doesn't look right. 11.25. Didn't I say 11.25? I, I, I said it before, too. Praise the Lord. You guys, people are just, you know, I said it before, right? Just say yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. A generous man will prosper. He who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Look at something and say, there it is. Get yourself out of the way. Stop focusing on your condition here this morning. And focus on somebody else's condition that you can help get them out of their condition into God's position. Ah. 
And by doing so, God says, I'll refresh you. I'll help you out of your condition <laughs> to get you to God's position. Bring hope to somebody. Encourage somebody. Bless somebody. Buy somebody lunch. Do something that doesn't have anything to do with yourself. <laughs> do something that the focus isn't about you, but it's about somebody else. And by doing so, now we become Christ-centered. And we the heart of God. And that was the heart of God. Amen. For was it not Jesus that got on his knees and washed the disciples' feet? Yeah. Who was the greatest? Was it the disciples or was it Jesus? Of course, we know the answer. It was Jesus. But who was the one that was serving? Who was the one that was focusing and pouring into the disciples? Not himself. And in an hour and in a time when he knew he was about to go to the cross. He was about to shed his blood for you and me. For he was the God man, the Theanthropos, Jesus, fully God, fully human, knowing just not too far ahead, he was about to fulfill his assignment for you and for me. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Texas focus off himself. Woo! Wouldn't that be a time where it's like, I pray for. Look at what I'm going through, what I'm about to go through. Need to hold, come on, everybody get together. It washes the disciples' feet. Because he was trying to paint a picture and show them if you want to be great, it's about serving, it's about putting others first and leading by example. It's not about being seen or heard or titles. Amen. Did you catch that? Yes. <clears throat> Charles, we just honor today. He doesn't go around talking about what he's doing. And he was. You should have seen him when we we're doing the bathrooms in here and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the floor. Luis was like, every five minutes he was sitting down taking a break. He's like, come on, Luis, look, man. I mean, everyone, I mean, every five minutes. And then he turned around, I was like, man, you should just be happy that I showed up. <laughs> hey, he tore it up. Give him a hand, amen. Him and Nick, him and Nick both. Praise the Lord. So I'm just giving him a hard time. You know, it worked late hours and many others, but they worked. I'll, they had their, what they were doing, and then they would come here and work some odd hours to have that kitchen looking the way it is. Amen? And then when I was like, here, let me give you something. Let me bless you. They wouldn't take the money. Nobody did. Nobody did. Did you hear what I said? Nobody did. Nobody did. I'm not trying to say I'm being not, I, you know, it's like somebody was like, oh, yeah, you know, pray to God, you know. And sometimes when you bless somebody, here's the other thing. You bless somebody, and it's like, it's like, you don't even get like you know you know when someone blesses you at, at least at least say thank you Amen. don't don't sit there like well i deserve this or yeah why wouldn't you do that <laughs> it, it, you need to get saved repent here today or you need to find another church because that's how, how we roll in this place amen? amen you know what it is to give somebody something and you bless them and it's like well like yeah it's like, yeah, that's the last time you're going to be in here. Amen. Can't even say thank you. And it's not you doing it. It's God giving you the privilege and the honor to be able to do that. And then all of a sudden you become, please. Look at someone and say, just please. He who refreshes others, himself will be refreshed. Find a need bigger than yourself, other than yourself, outside of yourself. And, it, and God will bring those opportunities around you at work Monday through Friday and meet that need. Amen. Sometimes it's just a word of encouragement. Sometimes you might, hey, you might have an extra $5, buy somebody lunch. Amen. You'd be amazed what that can do. Does this make sense? 
And then, and then when you get out of your condition by helping out somebody else's condition, and God puts you in position little by little, continue to do that because it protects that position. It never stops. Because by doing so, you're always on the offensive. And when you're always on the offensive, then the enemy has no, no chance or opportunity to come against you. So you stay, because if, if you keep on pushing and you keep on moving, you keep on going forward, right? We don't give the opportunity to the enemy to come in. In other words, idle time where the enemy comes and messes with our minds. And the next thing you know, you start thinking back 10 years ago. And the next thing you know, you find yourself back at the place you were thinking. Are you in this place? Yeah. Yeah. Lift up your hands and say, I receive it. I receive it. Praise God. Let's just worship the Lord for a few minutes. Come on.
presence of the Lord. Just a few minutes. So number one, number one, number one, uh, number one, God is working. When you think he's not, <laughs> he's doing the most on your behalf. You don't see it all now. You'll see it later. And if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, just like he did with Esther back then, he'll do with you right now. You have not been overlooked. It's not too late. You have not blown it. It's easy to laugh, but some, see, someone needs to hear it just like that. Because someone came to church this morning, or even on the way, or wherever you were, thinking, I really blew it this time. God is telling me to tell you that right now. Specifically, I blew it. I really blew it this time. God has sent me to tell you, you haven't blown it. Amen. <laughs> you know you're, you're, you're witnessing a miracle right now. Look how calm I am, huh? <laughs> you guys see my sweater? It's like really... You haven't blown it! God is still with you! Keep believing! Keep doing the next right thing! Keep placing yourselves in places of victory! Even when you don't feel like it, when you don't see anything happening around you, when it seems nothing is taking place, if you continue on course, whatever your condition might be, I'm here to tell you, eventually you will come out of that condition into God's position. And when it seems like, and you don't feel like, and remember, we really need to work on this also. I don't feel, it doesn't feel, I don't feel, fe 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 stop feeling. Look at somebody, stop feeling. <laughs> Went to church and what did you learn? Stop feeling. Because <laughs> feelings can take you to some bad places. Faith will take you to a place of victory. And the Bible says we walk by feelings. No, it says we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by feelings because if we walk by faith, see the circumstances, then we are, we are affected then by our circumstances. So our next step is dictated by the facts, the circumstances, the condition. So now it's like our feelings and what, what's happening around us, you know, and what we feel. No, we got to stop. And say, okay, what does the word of God say? Yes. Not going to be moved by my next feeling. I'm going to be moved by faith, which is the word of God. Yes. I might feel this way, but this is the day. Amen. I might want to knock somebody out right now, even though the day just started and I just got out of bed. <laughs> That's how I feel. But this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And I'm not just throwing that in there just to, you know, because it sounds good and say, oh, I got a great. I'm trying to talk to myself a little bit. I'm See, I'm preaching to myself. Amen. Because yeah, some of you think I just jump out of bed. I know my wife knows that that's not the case. But anyway, but you think I just jump out of bed and say, praise the Lord. 
More times than not, I get out of bed and I'm like, man. Does that encourage somebody? And I'm going to say about 75% of the time. You don't want to. But the bottom line is, that's what I feel. But I'm not moved by feelings. What does the word of God say? So this is, so you got to start lining up yourself in the word, speak the word, and then do the next right thing. This morning, the next right thing was to get to church. Yes. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I ain't scared. Can I be? Can, all right. I ain't scared. This morning, just driving, it's like, you know, I got, I got up, and I'm just trying to get my car. I just... Anyway, I got things in my mind, and I just all, and then we get in the car, and then, and then, just, just, what, what, what was I like this morning? Oh, uh, never mind. I got, <laughs> now we're talking about the hair and the little, I'm like, oh, I like it like this. You know, my, she's like, the hair, you got to fix it a little bit because it looks like you just came out of a thing or whatever. <laughs> Here, come here, come here, come here, real quick, real quick, and then we're going to get that on, and we're going to do it. Okay, watch this, watch this. And, 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 and my wife is, 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 is um, sporting, or no, are we? I'm representing. Representing India. The, from India. What? Oh. Pastor Isaac and Zeb, look at behind the screen. Anybody watching from India right now, wave to them and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God, I need to call. I, I, Pastor Isaac and Zeb, I, I'll be calling you guys. I know it's, I should have done that a couple months ago. So, <laughs> no, because we've got to plan a trip to get back to India this year. Amen. Okay. Amen. okay so, so just briefly, and you don't have to get into, you know, but, but okay, being honest. So I got, and then I get over, and we're driving, and she's like talking. I'm like, and I'm trying to, and I'm like, man, just you know, I'm not feeling it right now. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to get my, you know. So, and then, um, and then, and it's almost like you know when you're driving, you're you're almost like waiting for somebody to honk the horn so you can. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, you, you don't know anything about that, right? Oh, uh, you don't know nothing about that, amen? Everyone's all these angels, and everyone's perfect, amen? You know what I mean? It's one of those, like, come, I just, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm just, yeah, just go ahead. I dare, it's like, go ahead, please, honk this horn. Because, I don't know, anyway, praise the Lord, amen? And, 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 and then my sister's calling. Stacy, I'm going to call you too. I saw that you called this morning, but I just didn't feel like talking. Do you guys feel better? Do you feel better? Do you feel better? If God can work through, yeah, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Be encouraged. So, so anyway, so, no, she was, I was, we were driving. She's like, your sister's not. I'm like, well, I'm, 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 I'm like, well, I'll talk to you. And that was it. <laughs> then we got here, and then my mom and my dad are walking up and like, hey, son, or whatever. And they're like, well, you know, hey. And then my mom's like, What's the matter? Everything, you know, what did you say? She said, like, you know, are you okay or whatever? It's like, why wouldn't I be okay? <laughs> I didn't say it like that. But I'm like, you know, how, and I'm like, and I'm trying to explain it. And I'm like, man, you guys, and I turned around. I'm like, man, everyone knows when I'm like this. Just, just let me, I'm trying to get, I haven't even been in the sanctuary. I'm trying to, you know, I got to do this. And I'm trying, you know, and, and doing everything. And <sighs> Take it off your shoulders. Give it to Jesus. <laughs> Give it to Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, just real quick. The point I'm trying to make is I didn't feel like, and just to add, to, like at driving over here, but this was the right place, the next right thing. I'm encouraged right now. I have a peace right now. I had to make a decision. And when you don't feel like it, you got to stop and say, okay, I lived like that. Watch this long enough. Just, just, just confirm that I'm not, you know, I'm being honest. He's being honest. Yeah, he doesn't wake up like, praise the Lord. <laughs> He's like. Oh. <laughs> and then I'm usually like, good morning. How you doing? <laughs> it's for real. She does. Or I'm like, this good morning, morning sunshine. Like, good morning. And I'm go, like, should we snooze it? How much more time do I have? I'm like, five minutes. He's like, yeah, let's snooze it. Like, I think this morning no, was, think this morning, more minutes. yeah, this morning, I think she said, go on. She's like, you know, good morning. I'm like, what's up? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, good morning, sunshine. He's like, what's up? I'm like, <laughs> what's up? What's up, 
sunshine? <laughs> Amen. Amen. So yeah, so he's just, but he's human. You know, we're all human. Like when he's up here, this is the anointing of God yes. for sure. I mean, he's literally led. <laughs> For sure. No, for sure. And, and so, and it's, it's beautiful because, you know. How and you know, this whole front row is like, yeah, amen. We know that. <laughs> wow. Know. What does that mean? But it encourages all of us because God can use us. It That's doesn't right. matter. So message. what he does That's is he gets message. in position. He does the right, the next right thing. So even between this service until tonight, we tonight go, service, we and then you have a service Monday too. So even from now, you know, it's like there's going to be battles. It's going to happen. The devil's pissed, right? When God uses him to set people free, the devil's pissed. So he's like on the top of the list. But we don't care because Jesus is greater, right? But so there are going to be battles. So you just look at it and you just say, hey, you know what? It's all good because it's like we're in this. We're in this battle, but we're not alone. We're in it together. And so the real of it, the real part of it is, is like, yeah, he gets up and he has his challenges. But it's like all he has to do is get here. Once he's here, boom, he's on point, led by the Holy Spirit. He's in it. And most of the time, most all the time, you would never know what he went through. You would never know the battles that he fights. You never know. So we thank you for all your prayers because this is Jesus is in control and he has the final say in all of our lives. And that's why it's so important when the Holy Spirit brings like a picture of somebody's face or their name to our mind. It's to pray for them. It's good. It's to pray for them. You'd be surprised what that person's going through at that moment because we don't really know. We can dress up looking good. You know what I mean? God cleans us up very well, but we still have challenges on a moment to moment basis. So thank you for your prayers. We love you, church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. So just um, the point again is keep getting to the place of victory. You do the possible, God will do the impossible. Get to church. Get around the right people. Cut the wrong people out. Well then, but they need to be reached for you. Okay, they'll find out where you're going and they'll make their way over here if they really want to. You see what I'm saying? It says, isn't uh, 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 press in, work. If you're not at work, as everyone, like I learned a long time ago, when the church doors are open, be here. And watch what God will do. And know that God has not forsaken you, that it's not too late, and you have not blown it. And your miraculous comeback, if you continue to trust God and not give up, is going to be for somebody else's miraculous comeback. So God has not given up. He's working on your behalf. If he's for you, who can be against you? Number two, he who refreshes others will be refreshed himself. Look for opportunities to be a blessing. And watch how, number one, you're impacting and bringing life to somebody else and bringing hope. But that will come back to you and your condition to help you overcome your condition to get you in a God position. And then afterwards, too, once you come out of certain conditions, it's a way to protect your God position. You never stop. Stay on the charge. And actually, after great victories, we take it up to the, other, to the next level. Find opportunities. And with that, where's Pastor Ronnie at? Praise the Lord. Come on, Pastor Ronnie. Watch this. So watch. Number one. We said number one. You haven't blown it. God's working on your behalf. He's in the kitchen. Amen. Amen. Preparing. Number two. uh, uh, Someone's like, really? God's in the kitchen? (laughs) Well, he is. He's everywhere. Amen. He was so he is. And number two, he refreshes others will be refreshed himself. Take the focus off yourself and put it on somebody else and watch what God will do. The greatest among them is a servant. And number three, who wants to be wise? Oh, just about how are 50 percent like, yeah, I want to be wise. Well, here's your opportunity to be wise. Just a little further down in Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. So you're telling me, Ronnie, is this telling me that if I'm about soul winning, there's wisdom? Is that what it says? Okay, go ahead. So uh, next Saturday we have outreach at 9.30 here. Yeah. 
we meet in the kitchen. We have coffee donuts, and then we uh, get in groups, and we go out there and just invite people uh, to church. Amen. Which uh, you're inviting them to the body of Christ. Yes. Amen. But it's, it's just like, go ahead. What time? What time? At 930 next yeah, but Saturday you know, morning. I, I, wait, have you guys seen him in the commercial on, the, on television? You know, you know what? I, you know what? You know what? You know what I'm looking for, right? What do you guys? Hey, okay. Now watch this. You do realize that when he did that, that was like he was trying to act like me, and they were recording it. Like he didn't. No, no, that wasn't a plan, right? Am I right? Am I just trying to? It wasn't planned to be to put put on TV. You guys were just like, and you were just kind of having fun. Right. That, but it was his heart, though. He's not being dis. I mean, that, that is his heart. And then we took it. They told me what he was doing, and then we put it on air. Amen. <laughs> Okay, and we, and okay, and I'll, and if you are interested, you here's an opportunity right now. Once again, you know you're in the process. We're talking about serving, you know, giving back. You want to see some things change? Because some people are like, man, I'm stuck, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. What are you doing to get unstuck? Well, I'm waiting for God. I'm waiting for God. No, God's waiting for you. The miracle starts with salvation. Then God says, do something. Do something. Do something. Do something. Anything. It's like, well, I'm waiting. Nothing's changing. Well, it's going to be 30 years later, and you're going to be still waiting. Amen? Here's an opportunity to do something also. Besides coming to the outreach, we need bus drivers. Bus drivers. Well, I got to get here earlier, and I, I mean, you know, and then, you know, and it's like, and then I have to, after church when people are going home. Yeah, praise the Lord. Anything that's worthwhile, and when you're serving, if it doesn't cost you something, and it's not a commitment, and there's no sacrifice, it ain't God. That's the problem with the American church today. Do you want to hear what the problem is? We want to serve, because, you know, you hear something like this, but we want to do it within our terms. We don't want to get uncomfortable. We don't, want to, we don't want to go out of our way. But really, anything that's worthwhile, anything that's going to last, anything that's going to impact a life, it's going to cost something. It's going to demand commitment and sacrifice. Ten ways to get a million dollars. That's what we want to hear in churches today. No, here, 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 here it is. You know, you want to be great. You want to increase. You, you want to see God. Uh, die to yourself. Number sacrifice. Commit, and then try to stay committed. We want to see a move of God. We want to hear all this, like, you know, a move, we want to hear all the cute stuff. And, well, the move of God is when we get behind this pulpit on a Sunday between this hour and this hour, and then God will. No, you want a move of God? It ain't, it ain't out there. It's not what's going on out there. The reason why we're not seeing a move of God in some, and, 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 and it seems like, you know, things are, and, and, and in this country, what's happened last 50 years, it's not because, like I said last night, the, the, the liquor store or the person that's on the street or the gang member down over there. No, no. Actually, watch this. Praise God. They're waiting for the church. They don't, some of them aren't coming to church. Why would they want to come to church when there's no love? People come. Critical, judgmental, and we're saying the reason is because of this. The reason is because of that. The reason is because of guns. The reason is because of that. No, it's not. It's because the church is lazy. I said the church is lazy. Doesn't want to get uncomfortable. It's self-centered. Gets offended at every which thing it said. Jumps from one place to the other, can't stay committed, can't stay with it. Are you all right? Yeah. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Second Chronicles 7, 14, there it is. It doesn't say the people, the people. It says, if my people, period. That's you and me. We want to see something great happen, commitment. We want to see something great happen, 
sacrifice. We want to see something great happen. It's going to cost something. If it's not costing you something, it's not. Man, you are not in something that is significantly great. You want a resurrection? There will be a crucifixion. You can't have one without the other. Amen. Bus drivers. We need bus drivers. How many would you like? Uh, I don't know. It's... <laughs> Give me a number. Just, uh, we're not at least three, four. You know what he tells me? He wouldn't tell you in front of you. You know, we can have so many more people. I can reach so many more people, but I just don't have enough drivers. Yeah. And then they don't. And sometimes... You know, and God bless you, and some, God bless you, God bless you, smile, but I'm going to say it to someone, listen, you know, and it'd be nice, again, listen, things come up, and I get it, and thank you for your time, but you know what, at least give them the decency and call them when you're not going to show up. Amen. Yeah. How are we supposed to reach a city when I, we can't even get a phone call, and to my teachers also? And then we're stuck with no teachers. And I'm like going off on everybody else going, well, what do you mean? What's going on? Well, I don't even know. They're not here. Well, no one called? Well, some do and some don't. Gets a little uncomfortable. So that's ministry. You said you want to be in ministry, right? You want to be in ministry, right? You're not ready for ministry. You can't make a phone call. You're not ready for ministry. You can't even make one phone call. You're not ready for ministry. Are you all right? Okay, so you need about four. So we need, you know, uh, uh, if you're interested, please see Pastor Ronnie or Yota in the back. Um, if you have a, 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 a background in driving and things like that, we need drivers. We need to, listen, we need to go forward with this, amen? And we need teachers also. We need help with teachers. We need help with teachers. And whatever your focus is will become your destination, amen? If you really want to, if you really want to be somewhere, you will be there. Did you hear what I said? That's the truth. You know, you know, it's like, well, I didn't feel well. I know. And sometimes, you know, we need to rest. There's a time and place. But you know what? If you had Super Bowl tickets, you'd make it the same condition you were in. That's the question. I want you to think about it like this. From now on, this is good preaching right now and good teaching. And this is relevant. And I know some of you are here for the first time. You're like, man, this is kind of different. Well, praise the Lord. Amen. And we're just, this is the Holy Spirit leads. This is what we need to hear right now. And this is the way God wants to present it. You know what? If you had tickets to a Super Bowl or to some big event or, or you had a, a, an opportunity to go to a one-week all-inclusive trip to Cancun, Mexico. Okay. The condition you're in, would you still make it on that trip? If you know, or would you say, you know what? Because that same condition that you were in, you didn't make it to church or your commitment. The point I'm trying to make is, would you still make it to Cancun, though? And if you would make it to Cancun, then I expect you to be here early. Okay, so four drivers, right? Let's say five. Whatever we say five. Say five. 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 Yeah. Amen. So this Saturday, 930, we're having fun, but this is serious. Amen. Because we're talking about people. We're talking about souls. And we're talking about this is what we do, what we do. And here's an opportunity to refresh others. This Saturday, we're going out and, um, and, and reaching people, inviting them to church, 930, breakfast, fellowship, all that good stuff, and then we're going to go out. Amen? And then see Pastor Ronnie or Yota in the back if you're interested in helping in um, that area of ministry. Amen? Amen? Now let Pastor Ronnie know how much we love him.
Amen. The reality is this. This is really simple. We make it complicated. Get around the right people. Be where you're supposed to be. Put others first. Serve. And watch what God will do. But it will cost something. It comes at a price. And that's when you know you're in something that's worthwhile and something that God is real. I mean, that's where God is at work. Amen? If we can have the ushers quickly to come forward, we're going to take the offering and the tithes right now at this time. If you need an offering envelope, there should be one in the seat pocket in front of you. Jose, come up here. Come here. Let me Real quick, real quick. See you. Chuck me in a second if you would come and pray, and then we're gonna we're gonna finish this service. I got I want I got a scripture. They just that I got a scripture. I got something. You you're going out on Saturday, and you and you came to me, um, telling me where you know you want to go in an area, right? right, right, right. Let me ask you a question. Since you've been coming to small group, because okay, um, we all go through stuff and we're all in the process. Can you say that ever since you've really pressed in, because you have, you've pressed in, you've been coming to small groups, you've been, you've been coming to outreach because you came the last couple outreaches. I know you and Roy had a group that you guys went out to. Has it helped you with not, number one, you know you're helping others, but has it helped you personally by doing that? Yes. Okay, just just share that. Yes, it has. Um, I come from being a dope man, selling drugs, having those big things, and this week, I had, it wasn't an opportunity, but I was sitting at a restaurant. This guy, I was just sitting there eating, and he looks at me, and then he, had, he came in a Jaguar. He had the whole thing like what I used to be. And right now I'm getting paid 1050, but I thank God. Because you know what? Even my boss like, but we want to give you a raise. I said, you know what? Just hold up. I got hired full time. But you know what? If, I'm, if I gain the world and I lose my soul. So as I'm sitting there, the, the guy's looking at me and he's all like, hey, what's up, homie? I was like, oh, how you doing? You know, my name's Jose. He goes, oh, you just got out of prison? I was like, yeah. He's like, I know what you're going through. And he's like, hey, man, you want to get my number down? And I'm like, well, what are you talking about? He's like, well, come over and sit with me. And He's like, I could tell you this right now. He goes, you'll be making $4,500 to $10,000 in a day. Talk about the devil himself, huh? And then I, and I just started like, man. But then I said, you know what? I'm not trading my salvation for nothing. Because by the ministry, the prison ministry, by Pastor Gus, everybody here, and we're committed, you know. Committed. And like he said, because if we didn't call our job and say, hey, I'm not going to go, I'm sick, and you're committed to something doing in ministry and our job, we would have been fired and said, get out. <laughs> He's saying something. So remember where you came out of then the power of God, you know, and, and when that hit me right there, he's like, man, you, you, be, you be on my team. And I'm thinking to myself, like, <laughs> when I came out of prison, because I, I got caught for conspiracy, all kinds of things, and I was like, man, Lord, I'm saved now. Just like that song. He left the 99 to follow, to find you, to find the lost one. We all have a testimony. We all do. It's just like when you look at your son or your daughter, she, they look at you and say, Daddy, I love you. Mommy, I love you. You know, that's how God is with us. It was the hardest thing for me to decide 
Then I said, you know what? I'm going to take what the enemy took from me. You know what? A car don't make you. Clothes don't make you. You know what? When you're walking with God, he's putting you in the position, man, for victory, for more victory, for more victory. I shouldn't even be standing here. I've been shot five times. I have the bullet in my leg. I've been stabbed twice. And just like the brother said, when he was in the cell crying out to God, my daughter almost lost her life in 2017. And I cried out to God and through a phone. And when she was in ICU, my sister took it in and she was, they were saying they were going to pull the plug. And she got me a visit through that phone and through God, through that prayer. And when I was praying, she heard my voice and I said, Jesus, you're going to take her out of this. This machine started going crazy. <laughs> so I'm just letting you know that Jesus, we, we serve a mighty Jesus. He's not dead. You know what I mean? Hey, it says it through that song. He'll kick down the walls. He'll bring you out of that Mari P that you're in. But we have to put ourselves in position. It's not coincidence that you're here. It's not. It's not. Yeah. Like the pastor says, we have to sacrifice. We have to yield to him. You know, we have to yield to the great I am. The one that saved you, the one that loves you, the one that... He wants to embrace you and just give you the, man, the love that Amen. I've never felt so free now. Amen. So free that each one of you could touch somebody. I'm going to touch people, you know, because I've been through it. But we're going, and my heart is on 23rd Avenue in Northern. Yeah. It's a methadone place. And you know what? When I drive through there, I'm like, man, Lord, this is where you this is where you want me to go. So you want to do ministry? Like Pastor says, oh, why doesn't he call me up here? Or why don't you know? Well, this is your opportunity to go and tell somebody what God put you out of. To go tell that person there is hope. This is your opportunity. This is where God's going to put your, this pulpit, wherever we go That's on Saturday. Man. He's saying it. On Saturday. You know what I mean? Hey, so, thank you. Preacher, <laughs> man. But, and, you know, we're in a process, right? And, you know, he had, you know, as you guys know, like last year, you know, there was a, there was a moment where, we, you know, we hadn't seen Jose for a little while, but here it is. And remember, we started talking, I'm like, man, get here. Be in the place of victory. Get in the Bible says. Be right away. Do this. And watch what God will do the rest. So I believe, as you just shared that testimony, even what he went through this last week, that would the, would the results be maybe different a year ago or so if he wasn't, you know, because right now he has. He's been coming to outreaches. He's been at the Bible studies. Susie, he's in your guys' you and Roy's group. Um, um, you see him at the altars. I bring him up, and he, and, he, he, and he ministers to some of the guys up here. He's been, he comes to the services, and I know it's not easy. I see on his face. I know it's not easy sometimes. But right now, look at that. Uh, you know, by doing so, it's brought him to this place. And by the way, what you were seeing here was just a little glimpse because you're looking at a future preacher. You understand that, right? <laughs> You know what kind of you know what kind of church this is also? It's like you know what you know those hospitals where you go and they, they have um, um the, the 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 where they the, the it's a teaching hospital. Yeah. yeah, what do they call it? There's another. Give me a big like another word. Not a teaching. There. It's like where the residents come and they get. But it's like it's like it, so where they huh? Students. They come and they and they learn. I, I, yeah, we were at the hospital last week and there was a, a a young man that came in and he was he was putting in his hours. So what I'm saying is, by the way, it, it, just so you understand what kind of church this is, 
there's more going on. Okay, we're hearing testimonies. We're doing this, but there's everyone. There's a lot of people in this place that are on the go in training here. And, and, and even Jose and many others, you know, like right now, what that was also building up the small groups to talk, to, to get stuff out, to, and then forgot to raise us up. And right now, because when I started, I had little opportunities in front of a Bible study for 10 minutes, and then I was in front of a church, and I shared a couple words, you know, and you get, you get your faith builds up, and you get a little stronger and a little bit more bolder. So, so this is what this is all about, amen? amen. So this is a, so this, it's, well, this is, well, the, this is the trauma center. We already know that. And the doctor is in. And um, praise the Lord. And God's raising up a great army in this place. Chaplain Lee, would you please? What, what was the message? Because I kept when I was saying condition and position, you preached something on like position, position, condition. What, what was it like? What was it? It was, it was a third one or something you said. Remember, it was a while ago back. Do you know what, what I'm talking about? Something. I, I, it's, it's but it sounds familiar. familiar. Yeah. But I, can't I think it might. So I think I've taken something look, from what I've you preached. Preach probably about 30 times yeah. or more since yeah. then. But okay. So I, I think I just want to come clean. I think that's where the condition position thing came from. I, I took it. I took it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. First, I I, I have to. I have to compliment my brother and it's something he said that this is not the only place that a message can be preached. What he has done and what he is doing on a daily basis is preaching. His testimony is a message all by itself. And for you, just to remind you that the Bible says we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. So you're strengthening yourself daily every day you wake up because you have an opportunity to testify. And that's not just for him, but that's for all of us. See, let me tell you, when you become a preacher, your first message, it might be five minutes but it's testifying about what God has done for you. So he just preached his first message. When you can stand up and not be ashamed of the God you serve and able to tell somebody what he has done for you, that brings encouragement to somebody else. Because if he can do it for you, no good, filthy, sinful, useless until he gets a hold of you. My brother, you'll be able to witness to people that Pastor Gus and I, Pastor Tom, and all the other preachers would never be able to get an opportunity or a moment to entertain the word of God with. You're going to be able to speak to people. How long you've been out of prison? A year and three months. In three months, it's time to go back into prison because I know it's people there that, that they might not listen to anything I say, but I'll take a picture of you and put it up in the bulletin boards and, 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 and people be like, he's coming here? Yeah, he's coming here. And the house would be filled just to hear your testimony. What was I supposed to be up here doing? Praying for the offering? <laughs> All I know is like, it's like the, last, the, last, the last, you know, like the, some of the latest services, it's like it reminds me of some of the conferences we used to have. Just the flow. It's just, it, it hasn't been, okay, two songs, okay, we're going to sit, now we're going to have a, it just, it's a little bit of everything for everybody, and, um, and, um, and I just want God just to continue to do whatever he wants, his church, his people, so, um, it, but basically, yeah, whatever, 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 amen, praise God. But yeah. Praise the Lord. I, I just, I just, I just believe God, oh. and I trust God. I, just tell him this too, don't, but don't, but Wednesday, 
Oh. We have a small group, but you know what? But just Wednesday. But there, we have a special small group gathering. This week. And just leave it alone after that. This week. Now, you know, a lot of you have been missing out on the small Thank groups. Thank you. Big time. Um, Big time. For real. My For wife real. had been coming. I'd be at work, right? Yeah, and this my for wife real. was coming, and she come home all fired up. Woo, we had a time in there. Woo, we prayed, we prayed. Woo, Brother Tony preached, prayed, and we just had a time in the study. And Sister Ashley spoke a word. And, and, and I'm going, wait a minute. What's folks, going on? These, I, I never see none of these folks doing nothing. <laughs> what are you? Where is this going now? You all excited? And, uh, and then her phone be blowing up with text messages, yeah. and, and she'll start reading them and 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 going over what was what was taught about the the week before and what's coming up, and somebody's texting her about they they going into the hospital, and I'm saying, who are these folks texting you? That's my group. <laughs> I said, well, I love it. I said, okay, well. Oh, well, I gotta check this out. I'm gonna fly down the highway, and when I get off work, I'm coming to check out this group. <laughs> and I walked in, and I sat down, and it was just as calm. And then, you know, then they started discussing the Bible study and the <laughs> things that was going on at the time, and it was dealing with the Holy Spirit at that point. <laughs> walked in, I sat down, and people are talking who I've never seen say a word. And then all of a sudden, it's great. they start praying. Did you hear that? You, those are the folks in her group. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Look, they go to praying, and it's like a Holy Ghost explosion up in there. I, I, I think it's like a few sparks gonna start jumping off out of there because back there in that corner, yeah. there's some fire. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm telling you, and it's every week it, it's it been is. the same thing. I For missed real. a week and I said, I'll be there next week. And I, and I try not to say nothing because you know, I always have an opportunity. And, and then if I go to say a little too much, my, my wife said, <laughs> I, and I let everybody else speak, but it's just an awesome experience uh, on Wednesday nights. It and is. if you haven't come to the small groups, you really don't want to miss this don't one. Don't want to miss this one, because this one just it's just something. This one is special on this Wednesday. Yeah, and and it, it's how it's how we roll over here at this place. So all the groups are coming together. We're gonna start an hour earlier. But but the, and just leave it alone. Because don't. Don't even go no further? No, because if they That's want That's enough. Because, right, because, right, right, right. Just leave it if alone. you want to know what it is, you need to be here. That's it. It's going to start at 6 o'clock. You know, right around 6 ish. Right around 6 ish. 6 ish. 6. If you want to get in and get involved and do this together, you need if to you be here. Been coming, here's your opportunity. Here's your opportunity this week. Okay. And I'll say no more on that. That's it. That's it. That's it. Let's pray for the offering. Let's pray. If you have your offering in your hand, just kind of just hold it up for the Lord. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for this day, for this time, and for this hour. God, we recognize, Lord, that this week is the week leading up to the greatest day in history where you got up but before you got up you died for all of us you've hung on that cross you gave everything for us father we could never beat you given but we understand the principle of giving not to receive but to be a blessing. We understand the principle of giving back to you a portion of what you have given us. So in advance, we tell you thank you. Thank you, Father, for taking 
the time out for us. Taking time out at this moment to receive from us that portion. Use it, God, for the uplifting of your kingdom so that you would be glorified. Bless everyone that has to give on today and those that have not. For, Father, we believe that on the next time around, we will. And those that do not have a tangible thing right now to give, Throughout this week, Lord, let them give some time to you. Because we believe, Lord, giving is a blessing. Serving is a blessing. So we give to you right now, everyone in this room, with a cheerful heart and telling you thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're about to do with this church, this radical church on this corner for the uplifting of your kingdom, which is kingdom business. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Um, go ahead and show the people just a few minutes and we're going to... Um, that's the truth, what he just shared for Wednesday night. Charlie and Samantha, I know you guys are in another group, and you text immediately, man, the miracles and the things that are happening. Every time we finish, Pastor Robert, Veronica, that whole, the stories and the, and just like, he, the, Pastor Robert told me, and I'm, think about this, because the whole goal was this, and I want you to catch what's happening. I go, we need to get back. I don't remember if you remember, we're going back to what this church was all about, keeping the thing the thing, you know, um, um, souls, the hurting, the poor, the afflicted, the addicted, and lost. I go, when this place was birthed, it was birthed in a living room, in a Bible study, just letting the Holy Spirit lead and guide, and miracles would happen. I go, we need to get back to that. And that's exactly what's happening all over the place. If you notice, the church, the momentum, the growth, it's starting to happen. And I have no, I, 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 don't, I, I believe a big part of it has a lot to do with Wednesday night. Something with Wednesday night that has. So I want to encourage you, because everywhere, I can go down the list through all the groups. Man, it is special and God is moving. And then I was thinking, oh, we're going to make, we're going to change up some of the groups. And, you know, eventually, so we can, and, a, and a lot of people are like, man, no, you don't know. We're just starting to get to know each other and everyone's opening up. So, I, you know, so we're going to have, so we're probably going to add some groups. I don't know. We're going to kind of maybe keep some groups the way they are because something's happening. So we start here, but then we let the Holy, we give God something to work with, and then we let the Holy Spirit tighten it up here and there. Amen? We really want to encourage you to join us on Wednesday. There's something special we are doing, and you'll be blessed by being here. And also, God is moving in this church, and actually, just to keep in prayer, just I'm just throwing this in there just to stir this church up because of where we're going because we're, we're moving towards something. We're moving towards something. Counseling, education, a gymnasium, children's ministry. We want to get new buildings. We purchased, and it's in the, in the process of closing now, of, you know, the, the, the property. We purchased that, the corner property that's over by the children's ministry. So, now see right now, see you, you're not, you're not, you're not ready for this. You're not ready. You understand what's... We're, we're coming in an area and we're and we're changing the atmosphere in this area since we've been here for the glory of God amen let me give you this and we're done and don't forget to celebrate recovery on Monday tomorrow night at 5 45 starting with different dinner you know, you can read it later st. John chapter 5 and then we're gonna go into worship and just open it up for prayer Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for the Feast of the Jews. Now there, now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool with, which in Aramaic is called Bethsaida and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie. And by the way, we can also, we can call the place, here's another way, here's another name, the House of Grace or the Place of Outpouring. I just told you where you're at this morning. I just told you where you're at. And all I got was, amen. But if you've got a condition, 
you got a you got a strong amen because if you got a condition that's the place you want to be right now oh, I feel like preaching this right now here a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind the lame the paralyzed one was there that had been invalid for 38 years when Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this this condition for a long time he asked him do you want to get well sir the invalid replied I have no one to help me but tonight today as we finish there is no response as far as oh let me explain it doesn't explain Jesus is asking do you want to get well well uh, but look at someone say stop it he didn't ask for a whole sir the invalid replied I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred while I'm trying to get in someone else goes down ahead of me then Jesus said to him get up pick up your mat and walk at once the man was cured he picked up his mat and walked you're at the place of outpouring the water is stirred Jesus is asking you do you want to get well do you want to keep on repeating this thing or do you want to see change oh but no buts it's been 38 now past is over what are you going to do right now you're in a place of grace in a place of outpouring here this morning forgot to touch you and for your miracle to start here in this place tonight today 38 years someone keeps on getting in front of me each year I'm thinking 38 years if I would have just crawled up little by little by little I'd get right next to that thing where I just kind of tip myself over <laughs> We're getting the victim mentality out victor mentality in Christ Jesus you can't do all things through Christ strengthens you amen you are not a victim you are victorious through Christ why what what doesn't matter. the point is you're here right now the water is stirred and Jesus is asking do you want to be made well do you want to change the way you're living the direction you're going the miracle starts the relationship with him Number one, not ten ways, but one way to heaven, his name is Jesus Christ. It's not the way you start, it's the way you finish. And God is not intimidated by your sins, but he died for every one of your sins. I don't care how much you've done, how long you've done, Evan, what you did an hour before service, what are you going to do right now? And number two, if you're struggling with the condition, the power of God, I believe with all my heart here today, as God's confirming through his word is here for breakthrough turnaround and to give you the ability and the power when you leave this place to do the next right thing for some celebrate recovery tomorrow night for others Bible study on Wednesdays for others on Monday you're gonna have an opportunity to be a blessing to somebody and bring hope to somebody on a Monday at work You'll see them down and you're going to invite them. Somebody you've never shared the gospel with before. Somebody that you never talked to before. God's going to give you the ability, amen? So you can continue moving from your condition to God position. Are you in this place? Let's stand to our feet. The water is stirred as we worship the Lord right now. If you're in this place and you've never given your heart to the Lord, the miracle starts with the relationship with Him. If that's you, I want you to make your way up here. If you need a breakthrough in some area of your life, a touch from God, I want to see you come up to this altar. Amen. If someone needs help, praise the Lord. Amen. 
Someone's next to you, maybe they need some encouragement. Come with them. Help them get up here. Amen? Amen? Come on, every hand lifted up and worship Him as we come. Yes. Yes. Mercy is for us. Just lift up your hands. For Woo! 